This last video will be a lot shorter. I just want to show you how to make a short fly-through video of your scene. Blender has a lot of camera tools, but let's keep it simple. If your computer is chugging, you can switch back to solid view to animate the camera, but if it can handle rendered view, go ahead and stay in that mode. Since we like where our camera is for the static render, let's work backwards from this setup. Select the camera in the outliner and jump into the camera view by hitting zero on the number pad or clicking on the camera icon. The timeline down in the bottom of the workspace is just one of many animation tools in Blender, but it will be all we need for this simple fly-through. Notice that down on the right end of the timeline, there is a start and end frame. Let's render our video in 24 frames per second, just like the movies. The numbers in the timeline are frames, so if we want our video to be 10 seconds long, we need 240 frames. Make sure that the end frame says 240. If not, just click in the field and type in that number. Find the blue playhead. It's probably at the start on frame zero. You could drag it to the end, or you could just click on the jump to end point button in the controls. Let's back it up a few seconds so our camera holds the final render for three seconds. So back up the playhead by dragging it, or just type 168 in the current frame field if you want to be exact. Make sure the camera is selected in the outliner. The view frame will have an orange border around it if it is. Put your cursor anywhere in the viewport and hit the I key to insert a keyframe. From the pop-up list, select location and rotation to have Blender record the camera's current position. You should see some little orange dots appear in the timeline. Now click and drag the playhead and move it back to around frame 110. Remember to always move the playhead first before you move any objects in the scene. I'm just going to use the shift tilde shortcut to get into walkthrough mode and just hold down the A key to dolly to the left a little until the sun is on the other side of the woman. That way the sun will pass behind her as the camera dollies. Remember to click or enter to jump out of walkthrough mode. Now hit the I key again and set the keyframes for location and rotation as you did before. Now if you scrub forward or simply press the play button, you should see that camera move play forward until frame 168 or wherever you put your first keyframe. And now that I see it, I think the three seconds is longer than it needs to be, but I like the length of the, of the time that it takes for the camera to cross. If I just move the first set of keyframes, it will take the camera longer to make the dolly move. So what I can do is move both sets of keyframes together. Put the cursor at the top of the timeline till you see the cursor turn into a double-headed arrow, and you can drag it up a little bit to make more room in the timeline. Now drag a selection around all of the keyframes. In this case, we could also just hit the A key to select them all, since they're the only ones we have so far. Remember, in most cases, the same shortcuts work all over Blender. If you want to slide the timeline along, hold the middle mouse and drag, just like in the viewport. Zoom in and out with the scroll wheel, etc. And while your cursor is over the timeline and all the keyframes are selected, hit the G key to grab move, just like in the viewport, and slide them over until the camera move starts at about 130 and ends around 190. Now the time at the end of the video where the camera is not moving will be shorter, but the dolly move will be the same. It will just start later in the video. I'm going to jump to frame one and fill in the bit between. I'm using the shift tilde walkthrough mode to move the camera back near the edge of the plane that makes up the dunes. And then I'm going to point the camera down toward the ground so I don't see any of the sky or the woman with the lamp. With the playhead on frame one and the camera still selected, hit the I key and set the location and rotation. Go ahead and push play. You can also hit shift spacebar to start and stop if your cursor is over the timeline. And that's actually not bad. It's a nice graceful curve, but I think I'd like to try to keep the lantern in the shot more at the beginning. I'll move the playhead to about 50 and then use the walkthrough mode again to keep the camera pointed at the lantern till that point. So I need to I to insert keyframes. Remember to select the location and rotation. That extra step keeps the lantern in the frame for the whole move. There's all sorts more that you can do. You can select any object in the scene and do the same steps that we've done for the camera to move something in your scene. You can even animate light intensity or change materials. See these little dots everywhere at the end of all these inputs? That means it can be keyframed. So just to show you, let's make our lantern dim at the end of the video. I'll select the lantern and then select the glow material. Put the playhead at around 180. 
scroll down to the emission strength. We set it at 50 in the last video. We want it to stay bright from the start of the video up until this point. So put your cursor over the emission strength field and right click and select insert keyframe. Notice that the field turns kind of brown and the little dot turned into a diamond, letting you know that this value has a keyframe. And now scrub forward to 200 and something and change the value of that field to zero and then right click and select insert keyframe. The field turns green, letting you know that this value has changed by the keyframes. Now scrub back and play the video and watch the lamp dim and go out. Pretty cool, huh? But let's not have this in our movie. Right click on the emission strength field again and select clear keyframes and then set the value back to 50. Okay, enough fooling around. Let's render this video. Click on the output properties tab in the properties window, the one that looks like a printer. The frame rate is set to 24 frames per second by default, so we don't need to change that. But that drop down gives you all the common frame rates as well as the ability to set a custom rate. Check that the frame range starts at one and ends at two. 140. If you want to render out a draft version of a longer video, you can change the step rate to skip frames. And you can even render for 3D glasses if you want. But let's look closely at the output settings. Click on the folder to set a file path for where you want your video to be saved. Otherwise, it puts it in a temporary folder inside the Blender Applications folder. You can render out an image sequence and then assemble the images into a video in a video editing software. And that's a good idea if you're working on a big project. But for now, let's just switch this to FFmpeg video. That's a quick and easy format that plays in most software and operating systems. If you have added audio or you need more control over the encoding, you can open this tab for all kinds of cryptic options. But we can leave everything at default and just render. If you're rendering an EV on a decent computer, the render will take about 240 times longer than it took to render the still image. So if the image rendered in two seconds, it will take about eight minutes to render your video. My computer is pretty fast and it only took 19 seconds to render. If yours is really struggling, you can scale down the resolution for a smaller video. Just type in 50 or some other percent here in the format settings, and that works in the other direction too. Type in 200% for a 4K render. Or you could just set the final frame to 180 and not have it render the last 80 frames at the end where nothing is changing. But most computers should be able to render the scene in EV in less than five minutes. Find your video where you saved it and play it. It might be a bit choppy on the first playthrough, but don't worry. Holy cow, look at that. In a couple of hours, you've gone from learning how to move around in Blender to rendering a digital animation. And I know it seems like we covered a lot, and we did, but don't stop. Now that's maybe 2% of what this amazing tool can do. So go find some more tutorials, read some online documentation, or just poke around and see what things do. Thanks for watching, and now go make something amazing.